So it's often said that we are the top gear of beer, minus the racism, misogyny, and mother's vote. Um, and this is our reasonably priced car episode that we do every now and then. It is. I mean, you know, I can't think what I'm more excited about than reasonably priced classic pub snacks. So today we are doing classic pub snacks, kind of from around the world. But what we're talking about is the stuff that in the UK would be held on that, those weird cardboard hangers. Yeah, how do we describe this? I don't know if this is, happens in America or Europe, or European mm. compadres. Um, but they literally have these sort of like coat hangers that just have They're a like litany of... Posters uh, with little nicks yeah. in that you can hold packages. Snacks. Like Snackish. this one, and so it's a good yeah. way of selling it because you go, well, I'll have a point of that and a picket of that. So we're going to start with the one that I think is going to raise the most eyebrows from anybody that isn't <laughs> from the UK, which is the scampi fry. So to anybody that doesn't know, scampi is deep fried, often quite shit prawn, or whatever kind of little fishy thing they had. They're like a little sort of crustacean-y thing that's been... Uh... Yeah. Obliterated. I mean, so just to show you what quality this is, and this stuff is classic British pub food. Yeah. This is this used to be everywhere. It was. Increasingly less so. There is no fish in this. What? They're not they're like actually not as fishy as a skip. Less fishy than a skip. Even it's though just, a skip has no fish in it. That confuses my mind. So we could have gone with something sour for these, but we're not gonna. No. We're gonna go for a whip beer. Which yeah. is what we should have done with skips, but it said we went for a triple. Always go with your instincts. You can now get Japanese whip beer in British supermarkets. In a, in a Tesco or an, another, another massive Other supermarkets supermarket, yeah. exist. They're not a Patreon possibility, so don't worry. Well, they, I, I'm talking, I'm in talks to them constantly. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Tesco. Bill Tesco. Bill Tesco. What a guy. Um, so this is Hitachino Nest, um, who makes some sensational beer because it has to travel the whole of the world, sometimes not in the best condition. So I'm interested yeah. to see how this is doing. But so wits, lemony, well, orangey, technically. Yeah. Um, but they have that coriander, lemon zest, yogurty kind of thing from the yeast. I think it's going to be great with any seafood. It definitely is. And with a seafood-based but not seafood-containing maize-based snack from the 70s, I think it's going to be great. Ah. Oh. It's bringing out the, the lemony note. In the crisp. In the crisp. Yeah. I must say, I love the texture of these. I'd forgotten. They're, they're absurdly crispy. They're like so crispy, but they're, they're like really crummy as well. I think if you had that with a really good whip, yeah. like the St. Bernardus, like the Allagash, yeah. um, even like Camden Towns, although we shouldn't drink AB and Bev. Th this one, it's got none of the spice and the the, the citrusiness that you'd expect from a whip. It's a bit muted. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, if that zest and that spice, that coriander and that orange was upped, that would be a stunning match. Definitely. Wheat beer and super salty, like salt cod and whip beer. That's what it would be. Saltiness and whip beer. Bing bang bong. We, we've, we've had a little trip to the seaside. Yeah. Now we're, we're going to the old man boozer. We're going to the old man boozer, but actually the beer is going to come from the seaside. So, KP fucking nuts. I mean, you know, you never trust bar nuts. That is the... Uh, that's yeah, the never have them from bowls. That's mostly urine. They're pissed. But if they come from a weird cardboard rack in a packet... you got to get them off the wall. Don't get them on the bar. Off the wall. So, dry roasted nuts, I guess, are nuts that are roasted dry. We could have gone with salted, but I think these are better to go with. They're the beer. Jack D of the nut world. You're not really a nut fan, but... No. Um, no, I'm, I'm definitely allergic, but I might as well bosh load. You're definitely not allergic. Uh, we're going to have to open a bottle, Brad. We don't do that very often on the Craft Beer Channel anymore. Bloody old fashioned, mate. Like, for all of the geekiness that we have, all the excitement we have in new beers, when I see Tribute on cask in a pub, I'm like, well, that's my first. That's your go to. Yeah. So, Roger Ryman, the head brewer, the guy, turned around. The fortunes of St. Austell Brewery down in Cornwall. He said he used to be embarrassed by how many hops he added at the end of the boil. Right. Back in 99, which would have been like 20% of his recipe. 
Because he thought that was loads and all the brewer's mates that he had were like, what are you doing? What a waste of hops. So he was embarrassed by that. And now, obviously, there are some beers that don't have any hops even in the boil. They just boil the malt. And then at the end, they just and then, and then once it's cooling down, they add the hops. Yeah. So I love that story about how far beer has come since 1999. Since this beer was brewed, he was embarrassed to say 20% is in there. Now, if you're a craft brewery and you put 20% in, in at the start of the boil, it's embarrassing. It's completely flipped. Anyway, I thought that a bitter British hops caramel is best with a dry roasted, salty, umami... There's nothing wrong with it. There's a lot in common that they have. It's that kind of slightly roasted note, like a mildly toasted brown brown yeah. bread toast kind of thing. Um, they don't add anything to each other, but it's just there's a synergy. Union. There's a synergy yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. My only beef is I really don't like bitters from a bottle. Bitters are a cask lead beer when it's on on on, on like re-fermented or not re-fermented in bottle it feels kind of thin yeah 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 and i think i think that's a shame you don't get that full-bodied sweet caramel fresh bread kind of vibe from something from a bottle mm. so if you don't like potatoes get out right first of all um but like why wouldn't you like potatoes because they got all kinds of flavors these are beef and onion flavor so Tato's like the classic, it's like Walkers in the UK. Yeah, it's the Irish. Or Cheetos in America. We know that Irish people love potatoes. Yeah, it was it was driven by scarcity at one point, I think. It was. Which but we afterwards. We won't go into no. too much. It's like the New England IPA of, of Ireland. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> they taste like my grandma's beef Sunday roast. Which yeah, is quite an accomplishment. It's like an oxo cube. Mm. I mean, like it really is. And I, <laughs> good. Um, so we're not going to pair them with Guinness, though that no. would be a good match. I mean, it works. Um, we're going to pair them with something a little bit more crafty, a little bit more adventurous. So Little Sal is a blueberry wild beer from Allagash in Maine. And what we're thinking is Flemish red and beef go really well together, as we discovered in our last crisp, yeah, last like a, crisp and beer matching. Like a stew. Like a stew, like a, a, a bourguignon. That sort of richness, or a that as red, they call it in sort of like the beefy richness with the yeah. tomatoiness and all that. Yeah, beautiful. and I think with a little bit of fruitiness, we might end up with something pretty special. There's only one way to find out. There's only one way to find out. It could be awful. Ah, I'm getting a handful. That's a catastrophic failure. Where's the aniseed coming from? Mm. These are so umami. Yeah, I think they're too. Too marmy. Too marmy. I feel like I want to cut through it with something light and summery. You go blonde and... Yeah, maybe like... I'll tell you what. Actually lightens the tribute. That's better. Do you know what? It's bringing out a sort of like vinegary... ...ness. Some acidity in the crisp. Yeah. Which wasn't there before for me with that. Maybe it's the hydrolysized so <laughs> soy protein. Oh yes, I hear that's pretty tasty. So this next one's a bit personal for me. You can get it on the old cardboard slits with the yeah. thing. We'll work out the word for it eventually. Um, display board. Display board. Um, so the reason I wanted to put mini cheddars in, you can get it there, but it's got a huge emotional uh, attachment for me. In that, So I live near Camden in London, and when we had crap nights out, there was a pub called Quinn's. Still is a pub called Quinn's, miraculously. Uh, in Camden, which had a license till like 3 a.m. Never had anyone in. It was just full of like old guys who were drinking themselves to death. The floors were the same floors that you get in hospitals. Amazing. Uh, Antibacterial. Yeah, and it was just like all fosters and all kinds of nonsense on actual tap. But they had a Belgian fridge, inexplicably. Full of amazing beer. So we used to go there and we'd drink Duval uh, all night instead of going to the club uh, and do the mini cheddar challenge. Oh, Johnny knows how to live. 
So What's the, the mini cheddar the challenge? The mini cheddar challenge is how many mini cheddars can you eat in 30 seconds? Is that how many packets or how many singular? How many singular mini cheddars? It's like the cinnamon challenge. It's much harder than it's. They're so dry. So Brad and I are about to uh, compete in the are mini we? cheddar challenge. I'm going to lose And then terribly. afterwards, we are going... You're not allowed liquid. Oh, fuck it. Three, two, one, go. Have you eaten swallowed it? I haven't swallowed it. So I win by one. Eight to nine. Fair play. Yeah, it's bringing out... It's bringing it out, the sweetness, isn't it? Mm. I think Session IPA, even though it's designed to be, like, drunk in volume, is actually a really... Can be a nice food beer. Mm. Big IPAs are too much, but the citric quality can be really nice if it's session strength. And it's just great with anything slightly mature, cheesy, like cheddar, Wensleydale, Parmesan. Bitterness is good with those kind of... They're pretty flavors. good, Johnny. I've sort of, like, underrated uh, mini cheddars for years. Got, no, they're really good. Johnny is well-versed in the bacon flavour fries. I'm well versed in the frazzles. Frazzles for me are like the ultimate pub snack, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, so much umami, so much salty, like there's just, just the sort of dust, the, the, the dust that's going on on them, the <laughs> flavour dust is incredible. The, the, you know, you can eat dust and it doesn't have any calories in it. Dust. <laughs> They're amazing. But do you know what? I had these last night and I'm not sure I've ever eaten these before. And they were so indulgent. They were dripping. They were almost like wet with grease. Um, I just do that, just lick it. I mean, it's like a fucking mackerel or something. It's so oily. <laughs> yeah. So we've gone with a massive imperial stout. Uh, and actually my favorite beer at the moment, um, which is Alchemist's Luscious. They're famous for their IPA, but good Lord, is this a good beer. Dark as the night, that. It is, it smells of Biscoffy and Hobnob, dark chocolate Hobnobs. Mm. But it's got enough roast that it's gonna hopefully cut through the absurd oil, oil-based oil snack. But as well as complement that sweetness. Completely dries out the crisp, doesn't it? Yeah, and it makes it way more like that coffee, sort of, like it brings out a real coffee note, which is not in the beer, it's not in mm. the beer. That's really interesting, like both of them completely changed the other one. Yeah. Um, so this becomes immediately much more savoury, much more smoky, much more roasted, and that becomes immediately much less sweet. Mm. They both counteract the sweetness, and you end up with something really roasty and pungent and bitter, which bodes well over the course of a packet. Yeah. Um, maybe short term, you want them both separately. Yeah, I'm not sure it's it's the perfect match. I think it's a powerful match. Mm. And I, I I wouldn't like shy away from it necessarily. But I mean these I thought frazzles were the ultimate <laughs> um thing to have with while you're drinking. But actually now I've tried these and I've I've had a deeper dive into the bacon flavour fries from Smith's. I actually want to wear a hat that's sponsored by Smith's. So guys, I hope this has been helpful while you're in the, the pub trying to choose what beer to have with your snacks. Essentially, if it's mature cheese, you go hops. If it's beef, you go dark and roasty. And if it's nuts, you go classic. Uh, scampi fries. Um, I go lemony, beer or death. lemony, uh, yeah, whipped beer or death, yeah. Whipped beer or death. We've got loads of other crisp and beer matching and other snacks and beer matching coming up at the end of this video all over the screen. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for tuning in and we will be doing more of this shit very soon.